Hello, and welcome to Artful Insight. My name is Susan Schifrin. I'm the director of Arts Philadelphia. And together, you and I are going to spend about 30 to 40 minutes looking at a few pieces of art together. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month, we offer a program online, a live program with a small group of people joining together to talk about works of art from museums and cultural centers across the country, a different museum or center each month. And then in addition to that live program, we then produce a video like this. We will be looking at the same works of art that we did in the live group, but with the video, first of all, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time of day or night that suits you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, a more um, self-driven conversation about these works of art. I will ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I will share with you some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live program might have brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at them and think about them at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, then by all means, feel free to pause the video from time to time if you'd like so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, then I'm delighted and it'll be a conversation between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we will be visiting this month. Welcome to Artful Insights. So it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our Artful Insights program, where we'll be visiting the Rhode Island School of Design's Museum of Art. And we want to thank them for hosting us. Um, I just want to introduce you a little bit to the museum. So what you're seeing here is obviously the outside of the museum. When we go inside, you see the front desk. And as, as everyone noticed when we had our live group conversation, we now see somebody pointing us towards the next place we're going to go, which is into the galleries. So just a little bit about RISD Museum of Art. Um, it was established in 1877, so it has been around for quite a long time. Um, it focuses on stewarding works of art that represent diverse cultures from ancient times to the present. And um, because the Rhode Island School of Design is an art school and a design school, uh, the museum focuses on uh, exploring the works of makers and engages deeply with art and artists. Um, so what we are going to be looking at today is just one example of the very varied collection at the RISD Museum of Art. And I'll just show you on their website. You can see these are these are collections, permanent collection pieces that are on display. Um, if, if, if we were to be at the museum, we'd be able to see many of these collections in the galleries. So without further ado, thanking once again, the RISD Museum of Art for hosting us. Let's take a look at our first work of art. So, here we are, we're starting with 
a piece from the permanent collections of the RISD Museum, the Rhode Island School of Design Museum of Art. And I'd like first to um, just give you an opportunity to look at the whole piece, and then I'm going to show you some of the details by zooming in on the piece and moving slowly from top to bottom. So just take your time, see what you see. And one question I want you to think about as you are, are looking is, is there anything that stands out to you immediately? Is there a part of the painting, one figure in the painting? Is there anything that catches your eye? And then we'll talk about that once we've had a chance to spend some time looking at it together. So here you see the full piece, and now what I'm going to do is get much, much closer. I'm going to scroll slowly up. Hopefully I'm not making you seasick. And we're going to take a look. So now you see the very top of this piece. And slowly we're going to proceed down from top to bottom. So remember the question or, or, or anything else, frankly, that comes to mind. Do you see anything that really stands out to you as you're casting your eye over this whole piece? So here we are at the bottom of the piece. And now I'm going to take us out and we're back to seeing the whole piece in its entirety. So that question I asked, does something stand out to you more than anything else? That something, as I said, could be one of the figures, it could be a particular area of color. It could be that one figure is standing apart from the other figures and catching your eye because of that. What do you think? So one of the things that we might talk about to start with is there are groupings of figures in this painting. I think probably you'd agree with me. Um, and I wonder whether you see any similarity among the figures that are in one group. So for instance, we have what we might call a group here right here. Do you see anything as you look at them that says to you, oh yes, there are some similarities. If you look at their clothing, if you look at their faces, at their gestures, and now if we look across the way, if we focus on, I don't know if we call this a grouping, would you call it a grouping? I mean, there are two figures here who are no doubt 
on the right side of the painting. And there are three figures who are on the left side of the painting. So as you look at the faces of the two figures to the right, let's see if we can get you to see. So there's one face. There's the other face. Do you notice anything about their faces that they have in common? What about their clothing? Do you think their clothing is similar or different? What do you notice? Okay, so we've talked about there being five figures. They're kind of grouped into two groups. And again, that question I asked you, what, if anything, stands out to you in this painting? So I asked you, you know, are there similar color um, schemes, we might say, within each of these groups? What do you think you would answer to that? So let's look at this pair of figures here to start with. One has this very rich kind of orange red um, portion of her skirts. Is there anything else you see in the painting that draws your attention to similar colors? Or would you say that this piece here, I'm gonna now zoom in on the detail, is this piece of the skirt, or an overskirt it might be really, would you say that that is quite different from the other colors you see? What do you think? We might want to look at something else about the clothing. So we, we've referred to the fact that this woman seems to be wearing a skirt with an overskirt. It's a full length um, skirt. What about the others? Do you see, are they wearing similarly long skirts? They aren't, are they? They seem to be wearing um, trousers of some sort or pantaloons, you know, where the legs are separately clothed, just like women wear pants um these are the equivalent and they're bunched around the ankles let's take a look there at a, a detail so do you see that do you see that bunching right there so it allows you to see the feet to see the ankles right and that's true pretty much of all of the female figures in this painting, with one exception. Our figure that we were looking at before, wearing the long skirts. So we've identified a kind of color distinction in her clothing, a much deeper, richer color than the others are wearing. We've identified that she is not wearing trousers. We can't really see her legs. Um, and there's something else, isn't there? She alone is holding a musical instrument. 
and she's seemingly shown playing it. It's a stringed instrument, isn't it? So if I can get in a little closer, we'll see. She looks like she's strumming the strings with her right hand. And with her left hand, it looks like she's um, holding down the strings on the, the neck of the instrument as if to, you know, as, you know, if, if you're familiar with playing a guitar or even playing a violin or have seen somebody else doing it, you know that that's how different notes and different um, sonorities, we might say, are created. The combination of the plucking of the strings with the left hand and the fingering of the right hand. So this figure we've now discovered has a lot that distinguishes her from the others. While we're at it, we might as well look at what the other figures are holding. We've said that this figure is holding very prominently a, a musical instrument. And actually, as our group, uh, our live group was discussing that instrument, we were all wondering, you know, what is it? Could it be a sort of mandolin? Um, and that you know, we started talking about instruments that might come from a part of the world that we had talked about a little bit when we first thought, you know, where might this be? Where might this setting be? What, what country? What continent? Is it somewhere that is familiar to us, depending on who we are? What do we think? And the majority of our group that was discussing this piece said that they thought it, it looked like it might come from India. That as they looked at the faces of the figures, the faces made them think of Indian art, East Asian Indian art, not American Indian. So if, if this is an Indian representation, then we're guessing that the musical instrument is probably a traditional Indian instrument as well. And one member of our group, Jackie, said that the only Indian instrument with which she's familiar is the sitar. You may be perhaps have heard a sitar being played. It's um, got a very kind of twangy, uh, resonant sound to it. But this doesn't look like a sitar. If you look up the sitar um, on the internet, it, it's a very differently shaped instrument. Um, in any event, we're assuming that it is a traditional stringed Indian instrument of some sort. And that's what she's holding and playing. But what about the other figures? What are they holding? So the figure right next to her, whose head is covered, and actually all of their heads are covered, aren't they? She seems to be holding a candle in a candlestick and the candle is lit. See, the candle looks like it's lit. And if we go across to look at what these other figures are holding, maybe that will give us some sense of, you know, why have they all gathered here? What are they doing? So we have one musician, one woman holding a lit candle in a candlestick. Here we see a small figure, perhaps she's a little girl, 
Some of our group thought she might be anywhere between six and 10 years old. In one hand, she seems to be holding some sort of piece of cloth. You see the piece of cloth here? In the other hand, she's holding on to the hand of the figure who is standing behind her. Right? That figure standing behind her has her hand on the shoulder of the little girl, but in her other hand, in her right hand, it looks like she's holding some sort of walking stick. Interesting. So members of our group thought, does that mean that she's having difficulty walking? Does that mean that she seems somewhat elderly? And yet that didn't seem to quite jibe with what her face looks like. Her face looks young, don't you think? Anyway, just to continue our tour of what the figures in this painting are holding, we get to our leftmost figure. And what we see is in one hand, in her left hand, she's holding what some members of our group said looked like a vessel that would perhaps be holding liquid or oil of some sort. And in the other hand is what one of our group described as a teensy, weensy little teacup. So a vessel that might be holding liquid and perhaps something to pour it into. Okay, at this point, I'm going to pull back out again to show you the full piece. And I'd like you to take some time to look yourself at the image again. Look at some of the details. We'll show you some details and then we'll show you the, the whole piece as I'm doing now. Again, see what stands out to you. Do you agree that this looks like a scene that might be taking place in India? If you do, what time of day do you think it might be? Uh, what might the temperature be outside? And, you know, looking at that stringed instrument that this woman is playing, do you think it's a loud percussive sound she's making with it? Or do you think maybe it quiet sound. Anyway, take some time and when we come back together, it'll be great to talk with you about the things that you've observed. Welcome back. I hope you've had some time to uh, look at some of the details and look at, at the whole scene. Um, and let's talk a little bit about what you saw. So, for instance, one member of our group in our live discussion said, that as they were looking at these three faces, it looked as though these three female figures had a familial relationship to each other, that their faces looked very similar. 
So if you look at the little girl's face and at the face of the woman behind her, do you see a similarity? What do you think? The other thing that one member of our group observed, and I'm wondering if you saw this as well, is look at the pendants that each one of them is wearing. Doesn't it look like they're each wearing the same kind of pendant around their neck? So they're wearing pearls and then the red pendant. Each one of them. The other thing that we noticed is that if we go across the way, we don't see a pendant on the musician because her musical instrument is in the way. We do see a similar jewel on her forehead though jewel similar to this young woman, right? And the face of the woman to the right, to the very right, seems to look different than some of the other faces. Do you agree? I mean, maybe you don't, but anyway, that gave us some pause as we were trying to figure out, you know, why, why have they gathered here? Why the music? Why the lit candle? Why this vessel and this little teensy weensy teacup, as was said? Why the towel that the little girl is holding? And you know what our group came up with is perhaps this is some traditional rite of passage, celebrating, one of our groups said, could it be the little girl's transition into womanhood? And the rest of the group said, well, she's kind of young for that. Um, could it be that this is a celebration of her having been chosen to be the future wife of somebody. Is she carrying that towel? Let's look at the towel again. Right here, that little towel in her hand, because the oil in the vessel that's going to be poured into this little cup is somehow going to be applied to her and she will need that towel. Those were some of the questions that our group was asking. Then we came back to the question of, you know, as we were looking for similarities and differences among the figures, um, do you notice that if we look at all of their hands, we see that some red dye has been applied to their fingernails and even to their fingers. As, as one of our groups said, up, it looks like up to the first knuckle. And every single one of them seems to have that. Which prompted one member of our group to say, Perhaps it's henna, the red dye that is often used. It's used in a number of cultures as a kind of ceremonial ink. Sometimes um, the hands can be tattooed with these ornate um, designs made in henna ink. So as we were again trying to figure out what are these women doing here? The fact that all of them had the henna hands 
gave our group the feeling again that there's some sort of ceremony going on here we're not we're not perhaps culturally knowledgeable enough to know what that ceremony might be but there's music there's a candle that is lit there's a vessel that might have oils in it Remember I asked before we took that break for you to take your time looking at the details of the painting again. I asked, do you think that the musical instrument that one of the ladies is strumming, does that seem to you like it would be a loud percussive sound or a soft, gentle sound? Did you have any feeling one way or the other about that? Several members of our group said, well, these are all very gentle looking ladies. As, as one member joked, there are no thugs here. Um, so the sound seems as though it would also be gentle, which led us to look in more detail at the surroundings. And one of our groups said, oh, look, it looks like the moon is up. So is this nighttime? And if it's nighttime, is there a cool breeze? What would it feel like to be out in this setting? And the group, again, talked about the quietness, the sort of ceremonial quietness of what we see here. As we were talking about night having fallen, one of the group pointed out something that we really hadn't looked at much, which is these flowers, it's beautifully vivid colored flowers everything else again is is a kind of soft pale color except for the skirt of our musician as we've talked about but as we started to think of it being night and looked at the leaves and imagine perhaps a soft breeze going through those leaves we imagine perhaps the scent of these beautiful flowers, right? And then we started looking at the surface, the floor that they're standing on. And one of our party, one of our group said, with everything else that is so ornate, so ornamented, so full of detail, jewels and flowers, patterns. Even the foliage is so beautifully patterned. And then we look, I mean, the fence actually is even patterned, right? We take a closer look at the fence, get close to it. It's very much patterned as well almost seems to be an echo of the patterning of this textile here. But compared to all of that, the floor on which they're standing is so unornamented. Yes, there's a little bit of shadowing, but it's so plain. Why would that be, do you think? Why would the artist show us such a plain surface when everything else is so full of ornament? Even the dark sky has some real texture to it, don't you think? Look at that. So we're coming to the end of our time together and you know, there's still plenty of questions that we might have. Why is the musician the only one wearing a sari? 
why are the others wearing a Salar Kamis costume, the um, full trousers with a tunic worn over them? Why is the musician got the only really deep, intense color in the painting, other than those little red flowers, perhaps? Does that mean that we are supposed to see her first? Why are these three figures dressed in similar ways, wearing similar pendants? And what kind of ceremony are we looking at? What kind of rite of passage would involve music, would involve oil, would involve a lit candle? Why are there only women in this picture? So there are lots of questions remaining. And I imagine that if you go back, come back to this video, and look at the image again, you'll see things you didn't notice even during this time that we've been talking. Let me tell you, just before we go, let me tell you a little bit about what we do know about this painting. It's titled Women in a Garden on a Moonlit Night. Now, we don't know if that is just a descriptive title that was given to this piece or whether the artist who painted it called it that. But it, it certainly um, seems to uphold what we've noticed, doesn't it? It's a painting from 1744. So it's an 18th century Indian painting done in ink and watercolor on paper. And it's, it's almost an illumination. You know, if you think back to illuminated manuscripts from the medieval period in Europe, there are some very similar characteristics, the detail, the exquisite color, the, the, um, the red, use of red is a common, um, a common presence in illuminations of all kinds. But the other thing is, it's so small. It's nine and an eighth by six and a half inches. So just imagine the detail and incredible gift involved in giving us this kind of detail in something so small. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this exquisite image from the collections of the Rhode Island School of Design's Art Museum. I want to thank them again for partnering with us for Artful Insights. And I hope that your experience today will encourage you to come back and look at this video again and look at the painting some more because you know you're going to find more to look at but also that you'll be encouraged to come join us for other Artful Insights videos and for our live program every month. It's been such a pleasure spending time with you. Thanks for joining us for Artful Insights. Bye-bye.